Yes, we are in fact here. Meredith Morakovic, Jack Curry hanging out in New Jersey, right, Jack? I'm in New Jersey. I'm looking at this baseball on my desk, Meredith. It, it, it can't be used in any form yet, but we're hopeful. We're all hopeful that when we get through this and everybody makes smart decisions, stay home. Someday we'll, uh, we'll be back to covering the team that uses this baseball. Now, have you and your lovely wife, Pamela, been staying home, adhering to all those guidelines? Are you guys feeling okay? We are. Thank you for asking. Fortunately, we're doing well. Uh, you, you were one of the last humans that we saw after we left Florida on the 15th. And I think I've left the house once since then. I don't count going out for runs. You go out for a run, boom, and then I come back. We've made one grocery run. And, and other than that, it's been, it's been a lot of TV. It's been a lot of reading. It's been a lot of reconnecting and checking on friends and make, making sure that everybody in and around our friends and family is doing okay. How about you? How, how have you been uh, elapsing all of this time? Because I know you like to move. You, you don't like to be stationary. <laughs> Let's call a spade a spade. That last dinner, probably one of the most memorable of the year. Just kidding. It was fun, though. We had a nice time. Uh, I've been doing okay. I've been, I've been feeling well, which is the most important. I've been trying to stay in to do my part. I've been hanging out in Clearwater, uh, interacting with fans as much as I can, because just like them, I miss baseball as well. So I'm trying to just keep myself occupied during this time. But did you see Carl Anthony Towns and the video he posted? His mother has COVID-19. I did. Very emotional video. I'm very glad that someone of that stature and someone with that reach did that because it just reinforces the point home even more that this condition, this COVID-19, is it can hit anywhere and hit anyone. It doesn't matter what your salary bracket is. It doesn't matter uh, who you are. You can find this infiltrating your life. So I actually appreciate that he shared that. I hope that a lot of people saw that and were reminded to just take precautions. Be smart, be safe, be strong, be vigilant. And there's a way that all of us can get through this. And we hope that his mother winds up being okay in the end and everyone else that has had a connection to COVID-19 that everybody uh, gets healthy and everybody is okay. As far as baseball is concerned, we don't know when the start date is going to be, but we can certainly talk about it in theory, Jack. I had the opportunity to catch up with Aaron Boone a couple of days ago, and he revealed some Yankees are a little bit more on the men than they were prior. John Carlos Stanton doing a bit more, Aaron Judge healing quite a bit as well. It felt like when the team first dispersed, and this was very serious, and it's still very serious, that off to the side, if you worked for the Yankees or a Yankee fan, that is one of the things that you thought about. Well, there's going to be a delay. And they have some marquee players who were down, Judge, Stanton, Paxton. And now, like a lot of other teams who probably were waiting on some players, the Yankees will be able to potentially benefit from this time off. And it's, I won't even call it a silver lining. It's a gray lining because everybody wishes that they were playing right now. But I enjoyed your interview with Boone, and, and I'm glad he gave you those injury updates. One other thing I, I took away from your interview, and this is obviously much more lighthearted, is when you asked him if he saw the uh, Garrett Cole, Amy Cole video, which, by the way, sign her up right now. She looks like she can turn the double play. And Boone says to you, who do you think shot the video? Well, somebody told me that there was clear audio on it, but every time I saw it, I didn't click on it, so I didn't hear the audio. So maybe he was, in fact, on the video. I don't know, but I did get a kick out of that as well. And he's a guy that likes to be out and about, so having to stay home while he's doing his part, I imagine, knowing that they're a day away from opening day right now. They're supposed to be in Montreal the days that I talk to them. It's got to be just brutal on these players. Uh, having to wait to get things going. But it's all for the ultimate good. It, it is, and I think everyone understands that. I, I could, you could tell in Boone's demeanor that, that he understands that. And it doesn't mean you don't miss the games. It doesn't mean that you're not planning to be there. It just means that we're, that we're all trying to be smart. I, I'm going to show you a little peek at something. You probably can't read it, Meredith, but I, I did my Aaron Boone impersonation this morning. I, I started to draw out a starting lineup as if the Yankees were playing tomorrow. I, we, we did this at one of our yes dinners, and we were all knocking this around. And Presuming Sanchez was going to be healthy for opening day and Judge and Stanton weren't, can I go around the field and tell you who, I, who I'm sure. going with? 
Let's do right, it. I think out, outfield would have been Talkman in left, Gardner in center, Frazier in right. Across the infield, I think it's Urshela, Torres, DJ, Voigt, Cole on the mound, obviously, Sanchez behind the plate, and then Duhar DHing. Now, I haven't assembled them in lineup order yet. I think that's where they would have played defensively. Give me your thumbs up or thumbs down on, on that. I think thumbs up on that. I believe I'm trying to think of anybody else that I would maybe dispute. I'm thinking about outfield. The only thing you could do out there is maybe put Andujar in the outfield if you feel comfortable enough, but he would have to probably play left field, meaning that you would have Talkman over in right field. He's only for the most part, I believe this spring training had the reps in left. So I can't imagine that for opening day, if they chose to use him as an outfielder, that they would put him there. And then depending on who's on the mound on the other side, I could see maybe a Mike Ford DHing if that's a direction that they wanted to go. But we, we don't know, you know, what, what the situation would have been, who would have been healthy. But Clint Frazier certainly seems as though he's turned the corner a little bit defensively and just watching him in spring training. I know he's worked very hard this off season. And last season, he did not have the year that he wanted to have by any stretch of the imagination. It's interesting you bring that up, Meredith, because I had a conversation with him in Tampa, and we spent about 10 minutes talking about his hitting. And there was a lot of passion in his voice, and he talked about some of the adjustments he had made at the plate. Uh, in a nutshell, he told me that he tries to act as if he's hitting in a phone booth, which in that manner, think of how narrow a phone booth is. Maybe the millennials don't remember a phone booth, but they were very <laughs> narrow. And in that position, he wants to drive his hip toward the mound toward the pitcher. So he's giving me all these offensive details. And then to his credit, I thought he showed a ton of maturity because before I could even ask a question about his defense, he said, well, we all know what the elephant in the room is with me. He said, it's not my offense. It's my defense. And I need to show them that I can be a steady, solid defender at the major league level. And I thought that was a, a real sign of maturity from Clint. No doubt about it. And Talkman is such a luxury in that he can play every position He's comfortable at every position, and he's unbelievably athletic, plus defense in the outfield, regardless of where you stick him. So that gives Aaron Boone and that coaching staff a little bit more flexibility, depending on what direction they want to go with Andujar and Frazier on any given day. Yeah, Talkman's athleticism, his defensive ability, his ability to extend at bats and his plate discipline. Uh, talk about a savvy move by the Yankee organization to, uh, to pluck this guy from the Colorado Rockies, who had only given him a a cup of coffee in a, in a few seasons. And the Yankees saw enough in him that they, that they wanted to add him. They add him right before the season in 2019. And he's, he's got a home in the major leagues right now. This guy, to me, on defense alone is, yeah. is, is a valuable player to have on your roster. I spoke to him this spring at length, and he talked about when he had first come up, you know, he broke with the team. He was a late addition from the Rockies. Nobody really knew much about him. The first time up offensively, he kind of couldn't get into the swing of things. And he always knew in the back of his mind, if he would continue to get at bats, continue to get at get reps, he felt as though he could hit and contribute at the major league level. The Yankees did not give up on him, to their credit. And obviously, they had a lot of injuries. So they were forced to put guys in situations, but they could have very easily said at one point in time during that season, I think Clint Frazier was up. He was up as well. And they decided to option Frazier instead of Talkman. And that move proved to be a very good move for the Yankees at the time. Right. It shows that a lot of times the team does know a lot more about the players than we know. We, we think we know a decent amount and hopefully if we're good at our job, we do, but they saw enough in his game and enough in what he brought that, that they knew he could be a very productive player for them. Now, I know you've been watching some more shows than you typically <laughs> would watch because you have some time at home. Have you and Pamela finished Love is Blind yet? We haven't finished Love is Blind. I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> uh, we have not because American Idol gets in the way. Pamela's a big American Idol fan, so we have, we have to watch that too. I can't wait. I'm waiting in anticipation to go back and forth on that. And I have another one for you. I started watching on Netflix, Tiger King. What? what? <laughs> I, I watched the preview. I, I am definitely going to dig in on this. It, 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 looks like a, it looks like a carnival, circus, craziness times 100 is that what it is about pretty much hopefully people don't think this is a carnival and circus that we did just <laughs> now but jack stay well up there in new jersey and i'm sure we'll talk again friend sounds good meredith i'm gonna go throw this up against the wall it's a wiffle ball this time i can get away with throwing this around the house <laughs> bye everyone thanks for joining us